we talk about research question, research topic, and the literature review, etc. Now we are moving on to the next、uh, key chapter. Is about the way of、uh, conducting, uh, studies, scientific study, and we will incorporate certain elements about inductive, deductive methods. And also introduce different、uh, philosophy, their perspective, and what kind of methodology is related within that methodology. What kind of method is used? So this is a key chapter that we are going to introduce, and they will break down to several sections. So relate to、uh, what we are going to talk. So the paradigm of scientific approach have a、uh, two kind of theory. Inductive or deductive theory. So inductive theory, as、uh, what the word indicates, induction. So it moves from a fragmental detail to a connected view of situation. It shows a kind of process we observe certain phenomenon, and from the bay, from the phenomenon we have observed, we can give a general conclusion. And the opposite、uh, about deductive theory, if we begin、uh, as a kind of universal view of the situation, and we work on a particular, so it's a、uh, focus on application to general theory to a specific case, and so we can test the theory. And、I'll、give you a more specific example about that. So if we are moving fragmental detail to a connected view of a situation. Uh, and the deductive view, so we we can start thinking about、um, a, a universal view, and then I using perception. Okay, so in a classroom, you probably think about the professor standing in the front, and as a professor, we、uh, we talk about among everyone, say who you trust the student more, and generally the answer is who sit in front of me, or Who answer my question specifically? So we using a deductive way of thinking is when the, our audience are very interactive participation or by answering question to show their presence. They generally are good student. Then we we know this is some kind of universal view we are looking at. So are we able to work on particular? Then probably we just think about、uh, it, can we apply this kind of a perception concept into a specific case and we can test it. So how can we test it? We're probably using exam and and test where the students sit in the front. Are they the most、uh, good student in terms of the inter interpretation of a good student by the professor level through the social presence, the sit in front of us and. To do with student who being responsive because they are being reactive all the time, do they have a good score? And that is a way we can using the kind of general approach as a kind of deduction, and then we we test it. But the other inductive is using fragmental detail to decide how can we see that could be a phenomenon. So. Remember during the COVID nineteen time before we know COVID nineteen, we start to notice that people have certain symptoms. They are coughing, they have a headache, they have runny nose, and it's like a common flu. So people start to notice certain phenomena, and then they figure out, wow, the even the symptom sim symptom the same, but the hospital can't manage it because it cause a huge damage, in, uh, to the human as threaten the、uh, human life. So even we observe, observe. Sorry, even we observe the、uh, symptom of a patient, that could be some kind of fragmental detail we have. But through the lots of、uh, people with the same symptom, we find a phenomenon that is even similar to the common cold, but the result may be not the same. So we come with a general conclusion. There is something like flu, but not the same result, and this could be something more、uh, virus, and that could be a new virus. And this is also a suggesting from inductive theory and induction. So here I illustrate the inductive theory. It generally indicates from、uh, fragmental part and deduction 
is from a general view, like、uh, I talk about perception theory. That's a theory that people relate to how you see the frequency by social presence or by responsiveness. Then you can do. In a study of a, a scientific approach, generally not just in the in the scientific study, but also in the managerial study, they have a quite a few tendency people using hyper.、Uh, Hypothetical deductive approach, which means you identify a broad problem, and then you have a problem as a statement, and you develop your hypothesis. So you can determine by the measurement, and you collect data, you analyze, so interpret data. So why? So you know, some, sometimes the company they probably think about, ah,、oh, we are not making money. So it's a to do with economic downturn. So when the economy, we say we are losing the profit, we are not making the Uh, uh, much of profit at the moment, so this is a, a problem we have. So the problem is a common statement. Probably think, oh, because the economic is not go, go well, is a a lot of energy price going up. So that could be a problem we we have. So we have a hypothesis about environmental crisis will affect us in terms of the profit condition. So we start to measure about do we using. Uh, the same amount of the gas or electricity, so the result is the affecting because the economic, or do we overuse and we just simply think it's economic, but it's nothing to do with economic. It could be we overuse. So this is a kind of way of a、uh, people have a broad problem and then using a universal view to make a a, a kind of statement. And that kind of statement. Is kind of hypothesis there, and some other thing is people like to say, well, if we don't have so much data, we use it inductive because sometimes we observe, so we observe multiple、uh, incidents, and then we be able to using those incidents through observation to make a conclusion. However, that could be a challenge of inductive approach, because、um, I give you example.、Um, You probably see、uh, a swan, and you probably see your swan first time in your life is white, and then your friends see swan, and they say it's white, and then you go to somewhere in the around the lake, you see multiple swans in white. So through all your re- your repetitive encounter with meeting swan, seeing swan, your repeated observation about why is all white. So you have a general conclusion, say swan is white. But does that prove, or it's just your general observation? So this is inducted from fragmental part of、uh, information you observe, and then you make a conclusion. But this conclusion is not proof yet. This conclusion is just through your observation as an inductive approach, and you can propose most swan. Is white, but you can propose all swans are white. That's a difference. So in the inductive approach, sometimes you can prove a hypothesis because there's no amount of evidence to prove. Because you could probably find that could be a swan or black swan, and then if you see the black swan, you can overrule what you as a conclusion say, all swans are white. So this is something、uh, for you to think about. Some kind of a deductive method and inductive method, and they have a different challenge. So it's an example here. So through the inductive approach, don't jump into conclusion through the very you know,、uh, few incidents or he say she say. So maybe twenty people say and you say that's a proof, or two hundred people say and you say that's the proof to prove all of the thing you observe are the same result. Because it's hard to prove, because using this、uh, swan is、uh, a white or black. It could be you observe three, ten, even one thousand are white swan. Doesn't justify all swans are white. I just say most swans are white at the moment, but you probably see the black. So if you're using all, that could be、uh, shows the proof. You say is just not really a proof. It's just your, you know, quick conclusion. But that can be. Conf- they cannot be conf- confirmed. So in the scientific study, we always encourage people to think about 
a different way of study. We can accumulate different facts. We have an inductive reasoning, so we induct, so we can pre prepare some kind of uh, hypothesis or some kind of proposition to tell people that could be the tendency of doing. Then we can provide some theory to support what the theory say, and the theory can say, okay, let's work on the theory. That's using some measure to test it. And then we can go for experimental design, and then see whether we can prove all. So this is a kind of a a double double uh, uh, measurement to show people about a more scientific approach that can be much more,、um, how do you say it, convincing, from what how you observe a phenomenon, and you test on the phenomenon phenomenon, and you prove what could be the conclusion. So here is induction and deduction is just a different way of showing a sequential meaning, to、uh, have a sequential cons sequential approach of doing that. So we like to use our observation is useful, but this observation is sometimes help to think about why does this happen, how this happened, is answering most of question about how and why, but from uh from the deducted approach. It start to test it why, what you think, so what what it is about. So it's about deduction. It's testing about what. So both are important. You can't say、uh, inductive or deductive. Which one is better? Well, it could be sometimes. I can't say it's a、uh, both are equally important. Yes, but they have a different situation. When can you use an inductive? When can you use deductive? And then whether which one is better, it really depends on the context about how you use it. So in conducting scientific research in the managerial area, that's another way of thinking. Because in the management and behavior area, we are not always possible to say. It's one hundred percent scientific, but in the physical science, it can be the test result can be exact, and then that could be error free, because in physical science they are using a more confined, and that is a you know as a physical study, so it's different from so called managerial behavior, because managerial and behavioral part you can focus on feeling, you can focus on emotion, you can focus on attitude, you can focus on perception. And that is difficult to obtain a representative sample. For example, if you collect data and from say Indian, and say what do you feel when you see white, and you probably have a different result when you collect data from people from、uh, Japan. They probably have a different feeling, or people. How do you? How do you feel when you? How do you respond when you are very happy? When you go into different culture, they probably have a different response approach. So emotion. So that could be not able to obtain a representative. And the other thing is how people feel their emotion. It could be too many、uh, influence. Could be by the weather, by the the day, or the before what happens, or the moments, or. Some other environment,、uh, to conditioning how they perform. So therefore, in the managerial or behavioral area, in this kind of study, is so hard to to find the generalizability of findings. It can be that's why there's always some something called research gap because in the managerial area, there's always a way to find research gap because it's so hard. We can try to generalize certain situation, but it's mostly to do with the context space. But when we change the context, it's something a new context, and whether the context is interesting context or whether how you define the context to show that it's a valid area to do the research. Is down to individual how you identify the research gap. So here is a、uh, a study, uh, a basic theory. Say we talk about some kind of how we conduct the methodology, inductive way and deductive way, and these are both、uh, equivalent important that we cannot、uh, neglect it, and we can't assume everything we need to go inductive or everything we need to go deductive.